This is the day that the Lord had me. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We'll prepare our hearts for worship with the song, Hallelujah, Praise the Lamb. to worship. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, ye children of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ye anointed by God. I, Tiki, I will speak of your glory and honor and of your wonder. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, servants of God. Gracious and full of compassion, we declare your greatness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are good to all, and your tender mercies are everlasting. The hymn of praise. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you. 
Thank you. Please be seated for prayers. Let us praise him, praise him, and tell of his wonderful greatness and of his unstoppable love for us. Heavenly Father, on this blessed Sunday, we humbly come before you. We thank you for the gift of life and for the opportunity to embrace this new morning with a spirit of praise and worship. As we gather in prayer, we ask for your abundance blessings to surround us and that your presence will bring a spirit of calm and peace in our hearts as we prepare our hearts to meditate on your words and praise you. Magnificent Father, today we honor and praise you. We submit to our loyalty and, and adoration to you, our Alpha and Omega. Lord, you are our everlasting Father the creator of all the earth. And Lord, because of your great power and incomparable strength, we are all here in our right minds with the ability to praise and adore you. Forgiving Father, please forgive us as a church family for the sins of pride, rebellion, disobedience, selfishness, hatred, and adultery. Lord, forgive us for the half-hearted worship, for disrespecting your name, and for treating you irreverently. Forgive those who chose not to honor and bless you, and forget your presence in their daily lives. Loving Lord, I pray that you will continue to guide the day's proceedings and may your blessings and your grace accompany us throughout this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. 
For the responding, safe reading. Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil pouring running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. But his blessings, even I forevermore. At this time, remain standing while the praise team will bless our hearts with choruses of praise. Brothers and sisters, good morning. Good morning, children of God. Good morning. Right. It is indeed a beautiful morning. Amen. And we're going to just reflect on the name of Jesus. It is so great that in times of trouble and in times of pain and heartache, that we have a name that we can call to make things better. Amen. Amen. And in the times when we don't know who else to call, when it's just you alone, we still have somebody to call. Amen. Amen. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So we continue to just give God the praise and we'll continue to call on the name of Jesus for the things that we need. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Jesus from the mountain 
Intercessory prayer. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. God is a good God. Let us pray. My Lord and God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Yahweh God, you are great. You are indeed awesome. When I think of all your hands have made, I am awed by your wondrous works. My great Elohim, I come into your holy presence this morning, O God. I am humbled by your power, by your love, and your grace. Holy God, I intercede for our beloved island of Jamaica, for the crime and violence. Almighty God, I pray for this to cease and be no more, for destructive elements which ceased which continues to carry out illegal activities, scamming, abuse of children, the elderly, and those most vulnerable in our society. I pray, Almighty God, that this will end. My great El Elion God, I intercede for the youths, the children, O oh Lord, Please give them a protective edge, Lord, from sexual abuse, drugs, kidnapping, peer pressure, and all other abuse that's... I'm 
with all other abused lords. That strength, that strength, that God is good. Thank you, Jesus. All other abuse that they may come across on a daily basis. Cover their young lives, God. Help them to live and be prosperous, to be successful, and to realize their dreams, and for their ambition to become a reality. Father God, cover the caregivers, the guardians, the teachers, the parents, and all those who take care of our children and look out for them on a daily basis. Lord, guide them in the right direction. Teach them, Lord, how to impart knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to these young ones, O oh God. Teach them, Lord, that when they take care of these children, if it's even these little ones that we have done good for, we have done it unto God. Lord, help us to be obedient to you, that when you give us direction, Father God, we may be obedient. And do not go astray, for when we go astray, all kinds of calamities happen to us, O oh God. Father God, subdue us under your mighty hands. Strengthen us, guard us, protect us from the evil ones, from evil things, from evil powers, O oh God. And give us life everlasting. These and other mercies we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we're going to be having, we should be having our infant dedication. I'm looking around, I'm not seeing pastor. Is there? <laughs> I know you were here, okay. The Father is well known to us. Father, come. And um, along with mother and church rep and godparents. Right up, let us face the congregation. Can I be very biblical? If we read the book of Revelation, it says, Look and behold, behold thy son number, numberless number, that no one can number. And Jahil has brought a whole number um, um, with us this morning. Well, um, as you know, we follow the guidance of scriptures as we go 
forward with our earthly lives. And for those of us who read the Bible well and consistently, we will know that when a child is born in Old Testament, um, that there was always a blessing. And also, fathers used to do blessing on their children so that the generations coming behind will be able to be in a position to access a lot of things. We see our Lord Jesus Christ dedicating babies, blessing them. And we remind ourselves at this time that as Baptists, we prefer to use the word um, a dedication of instant infants rather than a christening. And I tell you why. Since some might not know it before, I'll just say it again. C-H-R-I-S-T-E-N, christen. You know when those African slaves used to come over and they were of different African retentions in their religion? What do they used to do? They used to christen them. Make Christians out of them, right? So they would do the christening. We take our cue from the book of Samuel, where Hannah made a presentation of young Samuel in the temple. And in like manner, we too are making a presentation of an infant to the Lord Jesus Christ. We generally have a little ceremony, short but very meaningful, and I hope will be very impactful to the parents and to those that surround this young child. Right. Now, parents were taking children to Jesus that he might lay his hands upon them. But when the disciples saw it, they did not care for Jesus to do it for different reasons. But one or two times, or maybe three times, we see Jesus being angry in, in the Bible, and that was one of them. He was angry that the disciples were not allowing the babies to come. And he said to them, being indignant, being angry, he said, allow the children to come unto me and do not prevent them, for of such belong the kingdom of God. Then he took the children in his arms and he blessed them, laying his hands upon them. This morning, we have um, two young parents who have been gifted with a child and have taken this child to the church, to the place that we believe is so very appropriate for the child to have that blessing upon her life. Now, to the parents, I say, are you thankful to God for the birth and creation of this, your daughter? Yes, sir. Thank you. And the, the, the rest of the congregation could join me because we do this thing so often. Do, do you see the serious responsibility that has come upon you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, can I tease Jalil in a serious way yes. before everybody? So one of the responsibilities is that you're going to come to church more often. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not only that, mm. Mm. I groan in my spirit. You, you, you know what I'm talking about, Jali. Yeah, I talk now. All right. Having said that, you see the serious responsibility that has come upon you. And, and we are saying this publicly that, you know, babies are really not toys. Um, they are living human beings that need the requisite attention, presence, emotional financial support and so on. So yeah, that's over to you in so many ways. And, and, and thirdly, do you plan to order your life, your words, and your deeds so that this your daughter may have a good example to follow? In other words, would you be a good example for her? Definitely, yes, sir. All right, all right. okay, all right. And um, do you pledge to send her to Sunday school. Yes, sir. Okay. God bless. Now, to the church family, do you pledge that as long as this child is around, 
you will support physically as much as possible. And even if she goes away, you will remain faithful in your prayerful support. If so, please indicate by standing. What, what names have you given to your daughter? Kaija Amira Bogle. Kaija? Bogle. Bogle. Make sure that. Um, could, could you get Kaija for one second, please? Yes. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting this thing. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, let me do this quickly, right? Young Igel, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you, and grant you peace. Take her and grow her the way the Lord would have. Let us pray. Yes, okay. All right. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for today and for this young child that has come into our world. Lord, we thank you that the parents are here today to dedicate her to you. And so, Lord, we ask a blessing upon her life that, oh God, she'll be surrounded by people who love you, who care for you and care for each other. Lord, we place her in your care almighty god let there be an uncommon anointing upon this young life so that as she goes through life she'll be fitted with the requisite skills and wisdom and knowledge and understanding to live in a world like this bless her parents oh god that they too will embrace all your principles and precepts that they too will walk worthy of the calling to which they have been called. Hear my cry, my prayer for this child and her parents and for all those who stand at this sacred altar pledging our support and all those who are standing in the congregation and those online who are also pledging their support. Again, may the Lord bless all of us as we do this very good act in your house. Hear our cries, hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'll just greet those who have accompanied you. Right. He's a sandstorm, he's a and dead and depart but jesus saw them here they come and sweetly smile and kindly said so for the children to come unto me We'll now be blessed with a special musical selection. We will stand. No, no. Can we stand? No. That's the name of the item. That's here on the program. Okay. Um. The person for the okay, musical go, go selection. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, please. Let's continue. We are going to prepare our hearts now for the communion. Are you going to come first or do we start the hymn? Do we start the hymn? All right, we are going to be singing, let us break bread together as we prepare ourselves for communion. Let 
certain things in Jamaica that we generally do because we are Jamaica. There are certain aspects of our lives that we don't take for granted. Well, we share a common accent. We have a common motto, common national anthem. And it's expected that as patriotic citizens, we would give of our best to our nation. The Lord's Supper embodies our belief in our Lord Jesus Christ. It is expected that as Christians, we take the Lord's Supper to show that we are believers, to testify to the world that we love him and that we are celebrating his death, burial, and resurrection. More so, celebrating his resurrection. And so, as believers, we come. Deacon Gordon Wilson, assisting me this morning, I, I, yes, in serving the Lord's Supper. If you truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and are resolved to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this sacrament to your comfort and growth in grace. Come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come not to testify that you are righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Come, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in your frailty and sin, you stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and help. Have mercy on us, O oh God according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out our transgressions, 
Wash away all our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. For we acknowledge our transgressions and our sin is always before us. Against you, you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Cleanse us with hyssop, and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Hide your face from our sins, and blot out all our iniquity. Create in us a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation, and grant us a willing spirit to sustain us. Amen. We have been doing our prayers of confession. Because every time we come to the Lord's table in a flippant way, not recognizing our human humanity, not recognizing that we transgress and sin, when we come to the Lord's table presumptuously, arrogantly boasting in our sinfulness is as if we are saying put him on the cross again crucify him let him feel the pain but we are a people with a humble and contrite heart who reflect upon our transgressions we as it were are prostrate humble before God. We have said, like David this morning, our prayers of confession. And then we just remind ourselves of two passages of scriptures. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The words of institution. And we just remind ourselves ever so often, what do we mean by the words of institution? How was this instituted? How did it come into being? And as people of the Bible, we know very well the story in the Gospels. On the very night that Judas betrayed Jesus, he took the bread from the table and he broke it and he gave to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood which is shed for the remission of the sins of many. Today, as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we do show the Lord's death until he comes. Having made our confession, we now continue with a prayer of consecration and thanksgiving for the elements. Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to gather at your table. We thank you, Lord, that we are worthy. You have made us worthy, God, to partake of these emblems. And Lord, if there is anything anything at all that would prevent us from being worthy of partaking. We ask that you would remove it from us. Bless these emblems as we are about to eat and drink. 
and may your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. While you are being served, we will sing the of the hymn that's on our order of worship. Okay. body broken for us. Eat all of it and be thankful. Heavenly Father, how can we say thanks for all that you have done for us? Lord, from taking us from the degradation of sin to the delight of salvation, from destruction to devotion, Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for those who are near to us and those who are dear to us. Heavenly Father, for those who have us on their minds to the extent that they can care for us, for the extent that they can commend us. O oh Lord, our God, we thank you for those you have sent in our lives to help us, to help us to be better persons. Lord, thank you for our church family 
and for those who pray consistently for us, who pray for us when we are down, who pray for us when we might be straying, whose only thought is that we be with you in a, in a meaningful way, in a way that brings glory to your name. Thank you, God, for the blessings that you give unto us. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be upon you. May God bless you, and we will collect the empty receptacles and um, continue our worship service. Time for Welcome, Information, Fellowship, and Stewardship of Giving. Welcome to Birchham Memorial Baptist Worship Service this morning. To those of us in the worship space and those on social media, saying that we are pleased to have you is an understatement because amidst the challenges of life, we can pause to acknowledge the Lord's faithfulness, provision, protection, and direction. We are extending special welcome to all our first-time visitors here in the chapel. And if we have them with us, can you please stand? Any first time are here? All right, we're happy to have you, and we hope we'll have you again. Let us truly worship the Lord, embracing the reality that absolutely nothing can separate us from his love and grace. We're so very happy to greet our pastor, Reverend Dave Wynne Thomas, God's messenger today. On behalf of the church family, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are indeed a source of blessings to all of us here at Merchell. The peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. We're acknowledging all persons who are participating in ministry this morning. Deacon on duty, ushers, media team, musician, praise team, and readers of the scripture. Thank you so much for your willingness to serve. Kindly listen to the following notices. Okay. Today is Sunday, April 14, the second in the month, a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Senior citizens meeting will be held tomorrow, Monday at 10.30 a.m. On Wednesday, activities remain as follows. Early morning devotion at 6 to 6.30 a.m. on Zoom. Face-to-face -face prayer meeting at 10 a.m. Members are encouraged to attend. Midday prayer and Bible study at noon. Circuit prayer and Bible study on Zoom platform at 7.30 p.m. Friday, youth fellowship will be held at 6 p.m. Upcoming funeral. The service of thanksgiving for the late brother Cleveland Gordon of class three will be held Saturday, April 20 at 11 a.m. Upcoming events. The St. James Baptist Association annual exchange of pulpit exercise will be on Sunday, April 26 in all the churches. New members meeting, all members who have become a part of our church family since October 2022 are asked to meet with the pastor, Reverend Dave Wynne Thomas, 
on Sunday, May 5 at 8.30 in the Education Center. Family Fellowship Sunday. Our annual Family Fellowship Sunday will be held on May 5 at 10 a.m. Birchell Memorial Baptist Church, 200th anniversary, 3K Run Walk, will be held on Saturday, May 4, 2024. Warm up starts at 5.30 a.m. and the race time is 6 a.m. The walk will be along Alice Eldemar Road, Montego Bay. The cost, children, $500, individual, $1,500, and group, $1,000. So that's the registration fee for persons who have interest in be, being a part of the run walk. Modern Sunday will be observed on Sunday, May 12th deaths around the family. We are extending our condolences to Sister Clover Scott Powell and family on the passing of her sister in Kingston. Those are the notices. Please bear them in mind. And now it's time for us to greet each other to stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, Let us pray. Lord, how can we say thanks for all that you have done for us? Things so undeserved, yet you have done to prove how much you love us. And Lord, we come this morning because we are so blessed. We are alive. We have health and strength. And we come, Lord, with 
one part of the many blessings or financial blessings. We pray, God, that as we come, we will give freely, lovingly, and willingly. And Lord, we pray that you will accept and bless as we give. In Jesus' name we pray. I need you, you need me, we're all a part of God's body, stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of God's body, it is You are important to me. I need you to serve us. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. another death in the family. We're saddened to announce the passing of Terrian Sanders Mary, who died on Wednesday, April 3, 2024. A member of class one, and you're being asked to keep the family in your prayers. It's now time for the reading of the scriptures, and we will have the Old Testament to be read by Testino Bulgin and the New Testament by Brother Keith Brown. Old Testament, Deuteronomy 26, 16 through to 19. And the New Testament, Ephesians 4, 1 through to 8. Good morning, church. All right, scripture reading is taken from. Let us hear the word of God as it is written in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 26, verse 16 to 19, and it reads, the Lord your God commands you this day to follow these decrees and laws carefully. Observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. 
you have declared this day that the Lord is your God, that you will walk in obedience to him, that you will keep his decrees, commands, and laws, that you will listen to him, and the Lord has declared this day that you are his people, his treasured possessions, as he promised, and that you are to keep his commands. He declared, he has declared, that he will set you in praise, fame, and honor high above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord your God, as he promised. This is a portion of God's holy word we honor by saying, Morning, church. Let us hear the word of God as it is written in the book of Ephesians, verse. Ephesians 4, verse 1 to, to 8. As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of calling. You have received, sorry, worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you have called to called to, to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of, of us, grace has been given to Christ, and not appointed a portion it. This is why it is says, when he ascended to high, on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. Here in it, the word of God. Thanks be to God. We we'll now have the hymn of meditation after which God's messenger will speak to us. The hymn of meditation. God of grace and God of Oh. 
be to God. Be seated, please. Sisters and brothers, I just want to continue the welcome given to us and trust that we have found being here an inspiration so far and that it will continue throughout the length of our worship experience. Greet you all very well. Today, I am going to repeat something we did in Bible study. I, I, I'm taking a kind of a risk in a way. Not a scientific study, but just by observation, maybe only about 20% of our congregation are regular at Bible studies. There are topics that we cover in Bible study that we don't generally do on a Sunday morning. And it, it kind of gives me the impression that we could become lopsided in our understanding of doctrines. Of course, a Sunday morning by uh, an anticipation supposed to be a little more charismatic and so on and does not always lend itself for much study. It, it, it sometimes is a time when we can fall asleep easily. Um, so we kind of find ourselves in a predicament and how do we get the message across to the entire church? There's a temptation, too, by members of many congregations to allow YouTubers and bloggers to become our teachers. Some of them, yes, might be very good, but the appeal sometimes is very different. The, the appeal is different, and we might find ourselves drawn to some exciting things that do not have um, depths of scriptures and interpretation can be based on things in the surrounding rather than rooted truly in the word of God. We, we are hoping to address it. Don't know how successful we might be. Uh, Say, for instance, we did a Bible study series on where but two or three are gathered. What does it mean? I'm not going to go through it now. But generally, we get a sense of comfort when we have little bit of people by saying, well, the Bible says, where but two or three are gathered. He's in the midst. Certainly he's in it, but that's not what the text was all about. Can't go it through now, but you might do a little research, or we might get back to it in, what, in a Bible study. Or some of the ones that we covered then, maybe not your fault, but just saying circumstances might not allow us to be present at times when we see to give um, exposure to the word of God in a study form. I'm saying all this to say that last Wednesday, we look at united in Christ or Christian unity, but united in Christ. And I apologize to my media team, but we made some changes. Um, I might have to do this as a three-part thing, and our time is basically almost gone already. But having said that, what do we mean by united in Christ? 
when Adventists saying one thing and Jehovah's Witness saying one thing and Church of God saying one thing and Pentecostals and Baptists, how can we claim to be united in Christ? Is it just a figment of our imagination? And what is the basis of our claim that we are united in Christ Jesus? want to jog your thoughts a bit before I do a short prayer. How come my Adventist friends will tell us that if we do quote-unquote worship on the Sabbath, we are go hell? Some of them at least. Why do they say that? And at the same time, my Adventist friends would sing a wonderful Church of God chorus in their praise and worship session. And at the same time, they will be singing Charles Wesley's lovely hymns in their hymn book written by a Sunday worshiper. You see where we're going? But, but there is something about the message that comes from a heart of a Christian that even though some people say the Catholics, them are demons, Oop, I'm, I'm not, you know, that's what I'm saying, what people say. Yet, when you look at some of the lovely songs that the Catholics write, and we have them, and we sing them, and some of the books that the fathers write, and we quote them, start to say to yourself, but these people who we demonize, in some ways, we are copying them, aping them, singing their songs, reading their books. Why does it resonate with us? Some questions for um, contemplation. Let us pray. Father, thank you for bringing us together as your church. One Lord, one church, one faith. Lord, we pray that the unity that is established by you will be maintained in all of our congregations. Hear our cries and our prayers in Jesus' name. All right. Now, further introduction. How many gods do we have as Christians? I would hear you say resoundingly, one God, one God. And the Bible establishes it firmly. I have a number of scripture verses, but I'll just speak, maybe just one now. Exodus 23, the first commandment states, you shall have no other gods before me. One God. But this one God comes to us as the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We do not have three gods, but God in his wisdom allows himself to be portrayed that way. We look at the baptism of Jesus Christ. We see Jesus was baptized coming up out of the water, then he heard a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him. So we are seeing three distinct beings, but one God. Said of the same substance, the same essence, one God, but three operations as it were. And it's not just a manifestation of God. It's not like God is an actor. And God comes out on stage as a woman, dressed as a woman, go back then dressed as a man, and then come back and dress as a little child. And I say, oh, this actor or actress is very good manifesting himself or herself in three forms. Now, God is one. But um, Pierce comes to us in three persons, distinct three persons. On Trinity Sunday, we are hoping to explore a little more the concept of the Trinity, the triune God. 
But just give that little um, explanation. When you talk about God manifesting himself in it's a manifestation, is a thing they call modalism, right? But we are not that. We believe in one single God. Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hope that the Lord will spare our lives that on Trinity Sunday or some other time, we can explore the concept of the Trinity a little more. But we just want to say that we are serving one God, and as Christians, we are united in Christ. This unity of which we speak as we celebrate and worship the one God is established on the foundation of oneness. Our unity in Christ is established on the foundation of oneness. And the passage read from the Old and the New Testament from Ephesians explain that. Right? Explain where we are going. Now, we are going to be looking at one Lord, one faith, one baptism. What do those terms mean? Now, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus recognized that the Christians at Ephesus had a little challenge. What, did, what challenge did they have? What, what challenge did these Christians at Ephesus have? In Ephesus at the time, they had many gods and many lords. Whole lot of lords and gods, right? Now, the new Christians being baptized, Going in that culture where they had many gods and many lords and where they proclaim in some instances that Caesar is Lord. How are they going to live in that culture with many lords and many gods? The apostle had to make it plain that you who have become Christians you can't bother with these holy for gods and holy for Lord. So he said to them, and you read, you can take your Bible to the Ephesian passage. We have how many lords? One Lord. One Lord. Even in St. John, we read where when Jesus was about to be crucified, and they wrote, King of the Jews. You hear what some people said? The religious establishment. We have only one Lord and he is Caesar. The emperor. The king. Who they worship. So they have emperor worship. Caesar worship. So people used to bow down and worship men. And maybe sometimes women too. But the Christians were only supposed to have only one Lord. And that is Jesus Christ. Had to make it clear to them. But what do we mean by Lord? Lord basically is someone who has absolute authority over. So when you proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, what are we saying? Jesus, you have complete authority over my life. That's why we sing songs like, take my life. I give you my all. We sing songs like, all to Jesus. I surrender. Meaning that the, the, the you-ness of you, if you want to put it that way, has been substituted into Jesus Christ. You now give over your life to him. Make him run it. He, you listen to him, we listen to him. And if we were going down Market Street, and that is what my mind tell you. Me a big man, somebody said, I'm a big man. And I have to go down Market Street, down, um, down the street. And Jesus said, no, you have to go up, not down. When we are surrendered to Jesus Christ, no matter how passionate we feel that going down Market Street is the right way, because he's Lord, we have to take a boat, turn, and go up. You understand? 
So he's Lord. He's the one that we worship. He's the one that we adore. Now they have an emperor, very popular to black people. Haile Selassie. But you know that some people call him Lord. Because they say he's God. We who are Christians cannot call Haile Selassie Lord. Because how much Lord we have? One. One master. He is the one. But it's interesting how many of us Christians don't really see the difference sometimes. So we have kind of, you know, synchronized, is that the word? Rasta theology with Christian theology. Without not even knowing it, we're irie. You understand? Uh, but, but, but check it out and see what it means. Can a Christian really be irie in the truest, purest sense of the word? Of course. You know, words change, take on new meaning, we adapt it. So, maybe you could be irony in the sense it becomes a Jamaican word. But not in the purest, strictest sense of how the word come into being. I, I, again, you, you know, when I was growing up as a boy, it was always cool to be gay. Yeah, oh, yes. Why are you looking at me like that? No, because gay means what? Happy. But now, if you go outside anywhere and tell people that you're gay, what happened? No, well, in Jamaica, yes. They, 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 they do all kinds of things. But words change, right? But we, as Christians, we say we have one Lord. Just one Lord, all right? And his name is Jesus Christ, meaning that Jesus Christ is our master. You, you know what Paul said? Paul said, I am a doulos. Slave, bond servant for Christ. Sometimes the translation, they say doulos can mean slave or can mean servant. But what he was saying, I have become a slave of Jesus Christ. But the kind of slave that I have become is not one that is forced upon me. I'm not a chattel slave. I, because of the conviction, says Paul, make myself a slave of Christ to willingly from my heart, drop my way of life to become one with Christ. Do we not sing songs like you are not your own? Really, that's what it is. We are not our own because we have one Lord and Master. Oh, it's hard to use word like Master in Jamaica today because it connotes all kind of, you know, servile bowing down to humankind. But not that. Jesus Christ is Lord. So, for the church at Ephesus, they had to know that with all the different gods them that they have and the different lords that they have, they were not privileged to go around serving Lord 1, Lord 2, Lord 3. You have to drop off every other Lord and just have one Lord. Alright? So, what else did they say? This oneness. So the, we speak about the Christian in, at St. Paul is, have, has that one Lord. The Christians over at New Testament have that one Lord. So it's one Lord that all of us Christians have. Whether we be in Gaza, whether we be in Israel, whether we be in Ukraine, or whether we be in Russia. One Lord. All right? But as Paul explained to these converts in Ephesus, he did not only speak of the one Lord. He sp spoke of one faith. One faith. Y you know, the word faith, depends on its context, can have different meanings. In scriptures, in Hebrews, we read, what? Now, faith is the substance of Things hope for the evidence of things not seen. This is not the faith that Paul is talking about here as he wrote to the church at Ephesus. What then did it mean? He was talking about a creed, a body of beliefs, a body of beliefs that we subscribe to as Christians. 
This body of belief or our creed then is in all churches, one faith. So again, irrespective of where the Christians are, we have one body of belief that is anchored in the Bible. So Christians everywhere, we have to use the Bible. That is our guidebook. A Christian who has another book, uh, we have to question who they are really. What is your book? I hope you're reading the book, you know, the book of books from Genesis to Revelation. And, and, and it's a challenge for us, I know, because if we don't read the Bible and become familiar with the Bible and study the Bible, then we will be led astray. So a little check up on us, including myself. How often do we read the Bible? How often do we try to study it to understand? How often do we try to get a good understanding of it than one that just tickles our fancy and makes us become emotional? Is there depth to it? You know, there's a little um, anecdotal thing that says... Um, uh, a pastor went to visit um, a member and he did not have his Bible so he said may I have your Bible please and she looked all she said but pastor I can't find my glasses to go search and she looked over and over the whole house can't find her glasses it was about Saturday or so eventually she stumbled on her Bible and the pair of glasses was perfectly perched in the Bible. From she leave church Sunday, she put her glasses in the Bible and that was it. Now we are not like that, okay? We are, we are not like that. But we have to know the Bible. We have to read it and we have to try to read as much as possible so that we will be informed about our body of beliefs. Right? Just one body of beliefs. Now, in the early church too, they were having problems with the doctrines. What do we believe? Who is Jesus Christ? And so they had the Apostles' Creed to remind them of the one faith that they had. And we all know the Apostles' Creed, most of us. It goes like this. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried. He descended into hell. And yes, hell, the grave. Mm, that's another translation for the word hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the Holy Universal Church, right? He didn't say the Holy Roman Catholic Church because that's just the Roman Catholic. The Roman Church has spread all over. But the Catholic Church, the word Catholic Universal, is not the one down Union Street we're talking now, you know? But the, the church that transcends borders and geography and all over, the one Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body to life everlasting. This one faith all of us subscribe to. This body of belief. When we leave that, this, the essential, we can have all kind of differences, right? Because even in our Baptist churches, we all believe that, you know. That keeps us united in Christ. We are one in Christ because we have one Lord. And we have one body of belief, one faith. But this is called the minimum for Christian belief that we can't get beneath. But when we leave that, we have all kinds of different beliefs. Because some Baptists believe you have to wear a hat. Some believe that you don't have to wear a hat. You know that we still believe, some people believe that if you have jewelry, you, you sin, right? D -d different kinds of understanding. So even though we have this one body of belief, we might have different interpretation, but it's the one body. 
So for instance, I had a dedication of baby this morning. We did not pour, is that a fusion? We did not sprinkle, that is aspersion. Ah. So we did not baptize the baby as my Catholic friends do, as my Anglican friends do. But, you know, at United Theological College of the West Indies, we talk about one faith. So who do we have at the United Theological College of the West Indies? We have the Anglicans, we have the Methodists, we have the United Church. All of us study at the same place. That's why we can invite Sister Tara to come preach here. That's why we can invite the ministers fraternal. We have only little, little differences, but we are one faith. Not two, not three. We all subscribe to the same basic doctrine. And finally, as we talk about the foundation for this unity in Christ, how many lords we have? So no Christian can say, hey, listen, I say, I. I mean it in them heart. You understand me? We cannot do that. And we can't say, holy, holy Buddha, hi. Mm -mm. Just Jesus Christ is Lord. That's why we sing songs like, he's Lord. He's Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. He rules our lives. And then we have one faith, one body of belief, one creed as established in the word of God. And finally, he speaks of one baptism. One baptism. Now, a question was asked at Bible study, and we tried to answer it um, in the evening get together. You know, some churches, when you sin, sin, no. When you have public sin, because if it was baptism that restored people to fellowship in Christ, I would have to have baptism every single Sunday I come to church. You, you, you understand me? So it's not our sins where we have baptism. Maybe if you're a pastor, I would have to baptize every Sunday morning too. Call me a deacon to baptize me or a fellow pastor. So it's, when you say one baptism, it doesn't mean one immersion in the pool. What then was the Apostle Paul talking about? If, if in those churches, when you fall out of grace, in order to come back in the membership, they baptize you again. So some Baptists will say, no man. The Bible says one baptism. But it's not that the Apostle talk about with the one baptism. What then did he mean? See if I can explain quickly. All right. Which one of you here, um, there, there's a chicken place down some sharp square and some of us love it now do i have a volunteer could you go down to that chicken place and just tell them to bring chicken for everybody here and you don't pay them you just order them pat them up which one of you you say no pastor that a thiefing we can't do that pastor i'm a holy righteous sanctified person it's not in your spiritual DNA to steal, right? It's not in your spiritual DNA to glaringly, blatantly, without any remorse, do certain things. You can't do it, right? Because something happened to you that changed your mind and brought you into a new consciousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. So ordinarily, when we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, we run down certain things. It is part of our lifestyle to do wrong, and we don't feel any guilt about it. You know, some people, when they do wrong, them, them nervous. Ever happened to you? Yeah. Nervous, they, 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 they tremble. Because something inside of them convicting them. But for some people, oh, the sin and boy, the, it's like there's a stadium ball breaking them eye. Them so brazen. I, I was trying to explain. I could see somebody come up here and looking at them, you know, and they take up this little card here. Take it up. And then I said to them, why did you take it up? And said, me, Pastor. Me never even come up here. And you look upon them, you know, and they might even have the card in them hand and then say, I know me. 
Please don't reach that stage. The mind is captured and captivated by the powers of darkness. As we read in Romans chapter 1. Because of who they were, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. So no matter how them lie, no matter how them thief, no matter what them do, I know nothing that. You understand? So the system go, it fix. I me that. Can't see anything else. And I told a little story about um, the, the, Sister Marcia knows that I used to drive a, a church brother car, brother car, a little escort. You don't know escort, you're just born. Mm -hmm. You know a Porsche and them something there, and Bimmer. Mm -hmm. So here am I driving this escort, Sister Courtney. It's a gear something, you know? Where I learned to drive standard. So here am I driving this car, about to go to the house. And I was in fourth gear, so I changed on into third, and I changed on into second. And in order to go up, that little grade to go up the man's, I usually engage first gear. I go over the hill. Lo and behold, after I got into second gear, you know what happened? The gear stick came up in my hand. And Mr. start fretting out and mash up the man's car, you understand? So I had to climb that little grade in second gear, but I reached. Then I call him trembling, and then the man started to apologize to me. Pastor, I should have told you that we had some little difficulty with the car, and it happens. But what's the point I'm making? The car was stuck in second gear. And unless the mechanic or somebody who knows about it come, it would be in second gear forever. No, you see, we... As human beings, we can get stuck in a gear, right? And so we live. Whether we're going over the mountain, that gear we're in. Whether we're going down the valley, that gear we're in. No matter what we're in, that gear. Because that's so our system set. So the mind that is against Christ can never say Jesus Christ is Lord. Can't. How come that mind that is set in second gear going to start to proclaim Jesus Christ. Something has to happen to the mind. There must be a change in the mind. And that is when the Holy Spirit come and duck we, baptize we, and we change. As a matter of fact, one of the um, meaning of the word baptize, Greek baptizo, they say is to D-Y-E. So what they used to do when they Die something, they say they baptize it. Right? So, we all know it, and the example I used at the Bible study was anybody here used to tie and die? Had that gone out of style too? I don't know how many dying take place now. But you take a piece of white cloth, right? And you dip it in the red dye. How the cloth come out? Red. So you baptize it, right? Their, their, their term. So we, they, they picked up that word of immersing in. We have water baptism as Baptists. We immerse totally. But then Paul uses that imagery to talk about what happens in the mind. Your mind becomes ducked in the spirit, become immersed in the spirit, right? And so you are baptized. So the same person who say, Jesus Christ, a ship, start to come to church at the altar, kneeling, he's Lord, he's Lord. Something happened to the mind. It has been baptized by the spirit of God. A total change. How it happened, how it dropped, how, how did that mind jump out of second gear? The spirit, the master mechanic as it were, immersed us. And we start to take on the properties of the spirit. You see, when I have the water baptism here, and the candidates come down in their nice dry clothes, after they go in the water and we immerse them, the clothes start to take on the properties of the water. And I say, go. So it used to be wet, and now it needs to be dry, and now it is wet. It changed. So the Holy Spirit takes control of our minds, our thoughts, 
and we are immersed in the things of the Spirit and we talk, start to take on the qualities of the Holy Spirit. So one verse says, he that used to steal, let him steal no more. Something happened in the mind. We are changed, we are transformed. So Paul himself says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. Something happened in our lives to change us. And so the Holy Spirit now takes up residence in our lives. So we, use, we are now guided by the Spirit with Jesus Christ as our Lord. Having this one faith, this one body of belief and none other. We have become one in Christ. So hear me now. The same Spirit that came upon anybody here used to be hostile to Jesus. You see, we grew up in a culture where we hear Jesus every day. So we're not so hostile, but there are some countries where they never, ever, ever hear the name Jesus Christ. Never. And can you imagine, just to reiterate and close, closing shortly, that person who never, never heard the name Jesus, passing by a crusade meeting, and the gospel is proclaimed in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the person comes to the altar. What alters the mind? What changes the mind? Because you know, one of our lecturers at UTC used to say, if you reach a certain age, and you have certain bad habits, and you know, drop it, you're dead with it. Hard to change, you know, so it go. When you reach a certain age, certain things that you used to do, it's hard, bad. Just like, oh, it's hard for you to go and break relish up and come over. It's hard. So those persons who grew up, say their DNA is set one way. They, they, they are cultured one way. They are, they, are, they are stuck in a gear one way. How come in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, them just change so? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God changed. And now they start to proclaim one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one church. Have you been baptized by the Spirit? Have you been baptized by the Spirit and only saying one Lord? So when the music is playing and they must say, ja, 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 jungle making mongle, you can't dance to it because of one Lord you have. And when they say, heal him up, heal him up, King Selassie, I, and you say, but me a Christian, me can't drop, no. Put to their music there. You're not disrespecting the, 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 the artist, but you have to respect your Lord. You understand me? And then all them songs, you, you know, young, any young people here, you have to listen to the song them, what I sing, because some of them are diametrically opposed to the teaching of the faith. Can't sing them. But the rhythm hold you sometimes, not you. Sometimes you never hear what the song I say. But the rhythm, oh, you have to move better in rhythm, <laughs> you know. You have to move beyond the rhythm to hear the lyrics. Hmm? Yeah, to, to, to hear what the lyrics saying, whether this honoring Christ or honoring him or dishonoring him. So, yes, that spirit comes upon us and makes us able to love the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot... Proclaim Jesus truthfully from the heart without having a spiritual baptism. But I'm just going to read it, what it says in first, in the Corinthian passage. Is there anybody here baptized by the Spirit? Anybody here baptized by the Spirit, with the Spirit? Turn your Bibles with, with me to first Corinthians 12 verse 13. Eh? What does it say? It says, for we were all baptized by the one spirit. So the one spirit baptized everybody over St. Paul that them can say Jesus Christ is Lord. The same spirit baptized them at water lane that they can say Jesus Christ is Lord. By the one spirit we all have been baptized. So make everybody fool and say you're not baptized in the spirit. You are, that's why you are claiming Christ as Lord. It's not just a social thing, you know. The spirit alters the gear that you are in and sets you on a new trajectory. All right? So we all baptize. And so because we all have the one spirit, 
Let us not quench the spirit. Let us not quench the spirit, but let us listen. I want to talk about quench the spirit, you know. Some people feel that is when you start to talk in tongues and you hold it down. Then they say, yeah, quench it. Mm -hmm. To quench the spirit, as we were trying to say the other day, Sister Shana, if the Holy Spirit come to you and say, please, I want you to go down into the deepest inner city and proclaim the gospel and you feel it from your head right down to the soles of your feet and you know that the spirit that talk to you and you say boy I'm afraid me now go you have quenched the spirit it's when we are disobedient to the leading of the spirit that we are quenching the spirit and the truth is you can't quench what you don't have so Paul was talking to the church people who were quenching the spirit. You have been baptized by the spirit. That's why we are Christian. There's a different thing than talking tongues and so on. So you're not baptized in the spirit, you're not talking tongues. Not so. You have to clarify all of those things, right? So, you are baptized by the spirit and you're becoming one body. But time running away, but I would deal with the one body thing. You know, the one body, all of us. So all the churches together, from where Uzbekistan to way down to South Africa, from where up into North Korea to South Korea, from way across the oceans to way up in Europe, back down to North America, what we say? One spirit God. That spirit calls us and leads us to say one Lord. One Lord. He, he, you it. The songwriter says, Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. That is how the spirit works to convict us, convert us, and confirm us in the faith. Praise be to God. Baptize people in the spirit. We praise him today. That's why we are not walking in a certain path. Because the spirit of God is there. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. Praise be to God. We are one of Christ. In Jesus name. Amen. The church is one foundation. One foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. One foundation. We don't have any other. The church, one. No matter where the church is, we are united by one spirit. We close with this hymn. The church is one foundation. It is, the, the song is not the church is one foundation. You know. Look at it. There's an apostrophe there. The church is. That which is of the church, we have one foundation, and his name is Jesus. Let us hear the opening um, chords, and then after that, we will stand and sing together. The church is one foundation. The church is one foundation. Is Jesus Christ the Lord? She is His milk shone by water and the word from heaven. He came and sought her to be His holy bride. With His own blood He bought her. South Africa, one. Her chart, her faith, her faith, body of faith. One Lord, one faith, one birth. Your holy name, just what partakes one holy food, communion, Lord's Supper, with one hope. and tribulation and tumult of her war she waits a continuation of peace forevermore till with the vision's glorious the long years are blessed and the great church be Church.
Let us pray. Oh, we, we had another verse, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Which was very important, but be that as it may. Father, we thank you that we are one. And you are one. And so, God, we learn to love those who are called by your name. We learn to help those who are called by your name. Those who have been baptized by the one spirit. And those who proclaim one Lord. And those of us who subscribe to one creed. One body of belief. And have become part of one body. The church Catholic. The church universal. Be with your people now Lord. And help us to embrace the grace that has been given to us. To embrace the unity that you have given to us through the oneness that is in the triune God. Thank you, God, for Christ's sake. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming and thanks for sharing. We have been a little long this morning, longer than our normal time. But that happens sometimes when I don't use my script. But bear with me. Hope that when we do the second part of keeping the oneness in the bond of peace. What does it mean? Read that passage again. Keeping this oneness in the bond of peace. Hope to be doing that shortly. God bless you. Let us receive the benediction together as we sing it together. The Lord bless you keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace Amen Amen children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you he is for you, 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 he is for you. Amen, 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 amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn you.